Hello, and welcome to my limited set review for the blue cards in Tons of Tarkir. Um, Cons is coming to Arena pretty soon, so I wanted to do some, some set review content for it. I want to preface this by saying I have not played Cons of Tarkir as a draft format, and as a result, I am treating this like a normal set review. I'm trying to evaluate the cards as if Wizards just said, hey, here's a new set that just released, and nobody knows anything about it, and nobody's played it. So that's how I'm treating the cards. I know there's information out there people have played before. Um, a lot of people have played a lot. It's a very well-liked format, very well-respected format. Um, it's bringing the fetch lands to Arena. There's not going to be any problems with that, surely. Um, and yeah, I mean, cons is, is a uh, very well-liked format, but I know nothing about it, basically. I do happen, you know, I do happen to own some cons cards because I was playing during the time, but I didn't really play, like, anything formal. It was just kind of, like, classic kitchen table, like, build decks that, you know, have no two drops in them situation. Um, and uh, Magic's changed a lot. Magic has changed a lot since what, Con's time. Um, so I'm going to be grading the cards based on this scale here. Let me get out of the way. Um, tier 1, best cards. Tier 5, worst cards. Feel free to pause and take a look at uh, what the tiers specifically mean. But basically, like it's 1 through 5. 1 is good. 5 is bad. And uh, we're going to get into the cards here. Uh, the first one is Blinding Spray. Or Binding Spray, sorry. Four and a blue for an instant. Creatures your opponent's control get minus four, minus zero until end of turn, and you draw a card. So this is kind of like a fog variant, um, but it's five mana. Uh, and five mana is a lot of mana to be paying for cards that are... Um, that don't do anything. <laughs> that affect the board, right? Like, it's... Yes, you, you can imagine in your mind, like, oh man, what if I just, like, completely, absolutely annihilated my opponent with this card? One of the, one issue with this card is that every single creature in this set, like literally all of them, not literally all of them, but like a lot of creatures in this set are like this is a two five, this is a three four, this is like have lower power than toughness. So you can't really profitably block even if you do this because your opponents they're still gonna have to double block their thing, and at that point, how much is this really doing? It's not really doing that much, and so you're getting like a eh. I don't know, I'm not gonna cast this card, it's just too expensive in the situation, I'll just be putting it in my deck. Cancel. One blue blue counter target spell. Um, so this is one that I think I remember like people talking being like cancel's not very good and limited. Counter spells like the old adage was counter spells aren't good and limited. And so like I'm trusting a little bit of like that mindset of hey counter spells didn't used to be good. I put it in tier four. Not completely unplayable. I think I think you could probably play it in some slow slow decks that are like all oh, or slow you know whatever. But uh. Yeah, I mean, they just printed this in AFR, except it made, like, it amassed one. Um, and that card was busted. That card was, like, really busted. <laughs> that card was insane. Um, so it doesn't take much for Cancel to be, like, the best card in your color in your format, but I don't think it's going to be the best here. I think it's playable, though. Clever Impersonator. Two blue-blue for a zero zero. You may have it enter the battlefield as a copy of any non-land permanent on the battlefield. Uh, so this is good, and it's better, obviously, like, today, what would I rate this card? I would rate this, like, maybe even worse than a Tier 3. No, you know what, I would put, put this at a Tier 3 today. I originally had it in a Tier 2. I'm going to put it back in Tier 2. The power of editing, it's back in Tier 2. Um, and, like, the reason I, because, like, I was like, what would I grade this today? I'd put this at, like, I'd be borderline Tier 4 today, because it's double pipped, but uh, it's probably fine in Tier 3 today. It's probably, like, a Tier, it's fine. It's, like, a fine card today. But in these times, you know, this type of card, better, right? Like, there were fewer things that mattered, so copying the things that matter is good, and you have more time, and, like, the double pip. The double pip is kind of a concern. I want to be very clear. Like, this is a three-color set, so double pip is tough, like, especially in this format. But, yeah, I think it's a fine card. Crippling Chill, 2 and a blue for an instant tap target creature. It doesn't untap during its controller's next untap step, and you draw a card. Um... So if this is in tier 3, maybe that's too high for this effect, right? It is only slowing it down for a turn, but you do draw a card. It's similar to bouncing their thing. It's not exactly the same. Um, but there's a, the reason I have this in tier 3 is, like, prowess, too. Like, prowess is, like, a real thing. And, like, there is some prowess cards. And if you're building, like, a prowess tempo deck, like, in blue, blue-white, I think, could do that pretty well. Maybe blue-red, but really blue-white, I think, would be the one you'd want. I think this could be good there. But, um... Yeah, I mean, it, in, in a normal like, control deck, this card's like, not very good. I mean, the worst case scenario is you're cycling. So it's not that bad, but yeah, it's okay. 
Dig through time. Six blue blue for an instant with delve. Uh, and you look at the top seven cards of your library, put two of them into your hand and the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. This is not constructed. You don't get to run, you know, ten fetch lands. You only get to run probably one max. Um, so, you know, it's going to be harder to enable delve or dig through time and delve just generally, right? Delve is, is going to be tougher to enable, but, you know, dig through time. Powerful card. Um... Even if you cast it for five mana, or uh, four mana, or four or five mana, yeah, I mean, you can. That's doable. You can get three cards in your graveyard. You can like play like spells that are cheap. You know, whatever, all that stuff. Um, and in the mid to late game, this can just kind of take over. And I, and again, slower formats, right? It's uh, it's good. It's going to be decent. I think. I think it'll be a decent card. It may just be worse than Treasure Cruise and Limited. I don't think so. I think it's probably about the same. I have it rated high, higher than Treasure Cruise. You'll see later. Just because the card selection, I think, does matter more in this format than just, like, drawing cards. Because there really are, like, a huge gap between the cards that are, like, really good and the cards that are just kind of, like, whatever bad stuff. So, like, there is kind of, like, a thing where, like, hey, this really helps you find your good cards. Uh, of which there are not that many. It is double pip, though, as well, as I mentioned. Disdainful Strokes. blue One and a blue for an instant counter-target spell with the converted mana cost four or greater. Um, there's delve and stuff and like other things that this counters in this format. It is a common, so like, I don't know. I still don't think you should really play too much of this because it, it's just so situational. And every format to Sainful Stroke has been legal in. It's just always been too situational. Um, even in cube, like the arena cube, it's kind of too situational. Like, and you don't really want to play it. <laughs> so, I don't know. It's, uh, it's always like, it's a card they print a lot. It's kind of like, eh, is it really ever that good? And like, I don't know. Like, you, you'll, it's great when it works, but when it doesn't work, it is just, you lose, so, yeah. Dragon's Eye Servants. One and a blue for a 0-6. Doesn't have Defender, by the way, not a Defender. Uh, it has Morph, reveal a blue card in your hand, and when it's turned, if it, when it's turned face up, look at target opponent's hand. Um, honestly, I think this is genuinely just better. It's like a 3-mana three, 2-2. Three two, two. I'm going to keep it 100% real with you. You can just make this a 3-mana 2-2, two, two, and you're going to be happy. But you can look at your opponent's hand. Yeah, well, <laughs> just, ah, it's a zero six. It's a zero six, man. You're playing a two minute zero six. I, I don't. I don't know. I, I guess it blocks forever. I, I just. Oh man, I, this card. This card just looks awful. It just looks so bad. Yeah, that's all I have to say. Embodiment of Spring, one blue mana for a zero three with the ability one and a green, and you can sacrifice it. Search your library for a basic land card, put it under the battlefield, tapped, and shuffle your library. So it's kind of like a you know Wayfarer's Bobble. This is this is like Wayfarer's Bobble, and Wayfarer's Bobble isn't great now, like in modern limited. But in you know 2014, it was you know you can like ramp was a real thing, and this you know it's it's drawing you a card technically you know right draws the card puts it on the battlefield you are ramping ramp matters in this format it fixes your mana a little bit although you need blue and green mana to be able to fix your mana so that's a little tough and that's why I put it in tier four instead of tier five uh, I still think it's bad I'm not gonna play it but you know I I could see it having potential in some situations. Force away. One and a blue for an instant return target creature to its owner's hand. And if you control a creature with power four or greater, you may draw a card if you do discard a card. Um, you're just not going to be having that many power four or greater creatures in blue. Like, it just isn't going to be happening. So, um, yeah, it's going to be tough. You're just not going to have that many four power creatures, generally. Like, I looked over the set. I know it's a theme. There just aren't that many of them. Like, genuinely. There really just aren't that many. So... Like this, this card is going to be um, basically just a two-minute bounce spell, and two-minute bounce spells were even worse in 2014, I think, than they are now, because it was just less of a tempo game, right? Like, these days, if you have to be like, ah, oh, well, I had to pay two mana for a bounce spell, ah, it's not like, you know, I mean, whatever. But, uh, yeah. It's, uh, seems like whatever to me, it's fine. Glacial Stalker, 5 and a blue for a 4 5 with Morph for 4 and a blue. So, this does the Morph thing really well, right? Like, on turn 3, you play this. You're always morphing this, right? Like, you're literally never not morphing this. Because um, you play this on 3 as a 2 2. 
and then on turn five you attack with your two two and they're like and then you just flip it like you, you get to attack on turn five the four five um i don't know how the rules interaction works like if you if you say i'm gonna morph my thing I think your opponent can respond by, like, dealing two damage to it or removing it. You know? So, I think that's a thing that can happen. I'm not 100% sure on that. But, uh, I mean, we'll see. Uh, I'll, I'll check. There's not a ton of instant speed interactions. So not, it's not, like, a really big deal, to be honest with you. It's not, like, a huge... Like, that doesn't really matter that much. But, uh... We'll see. I think this sounds good. I don't know. I like it. I like Glacial Stalker. Do we have Glacial Stalker here? I think I'm going to spend, like, way too much time looking for Glacial Stalker and not find it. I think I, I do have a copy of it somewhere. Oh, man, look at this bad boy. Chrono Stutter. Anyways. Now, there's a bad card. <laughs> Icy Blast. Definitely a card I have a copy of. Uh, X and a blue for an instant tap X creatures. If you control a creature with power forward, those creatures don't untap during their controller's next untap steps. So, this is kind of like a sleep. Um, this card, it, I think is going to be surprisingly decent, like, to me, like, it looks kind of like, ah, does it really do anything, but this is, like, a lot of, like, this is, like, a lot of tapping your opponent's stuff down, and it has a decent amount of versatility, and, like, if you do happen to have something with four power, which, I, again, I don't think is going to happen, like, all the time, but, it, you know, sometimes, if it does, if it does ever happen, you're probably just winning, you get, like, two turns of their stuff being tapped, and it's, like, Man, it's a lot of stuff, and like, yeah, they can play more stuff, but it's gonna it's gonna make some good attacks. Like, especially this being instant, right? Instant speed, end of your turn. I tapped on all your stuff. Now I get to attack you um, for like a bunch of damage. You are now at like three life. You weren't expecting that, you know? It just seems kind of solid, right? Just guy elder. We're in a blue for a one-two with prowess. When it deals combat damage to a player, you may draw a card if you do discard a card. Yeah, it seems really solid to me, because, I mean, there again, there aren't very many good two-drops, so it's not, like, you're not, it's going to be the best thing on the battlefield when you play it on turn two, right? Likely. Um, yes, it's a 1-2, right? It's not a 2-2, two, two. it'd be nice if it were a 2-2 two, two, or a 1-3, but it's a 1-2, is not that much worse than a 1-3, as with prowess, to be honest. And um, the fact that you can loot, and looting in the set's great, it enables de delve and stuff, like, this is a set, always loot. I cannot express this enough, this is a set you always need to be looting. Um, you should generally be doing it anyways. Um, there are situations, it's kind of, it's, it, it's a weird, like, conceptual thing whether you should always be looting or not always be looting, but in this set, you should pretty much just always do it because you'd have Delve and stuff in your deck and you just want to enable that. Um, yeah, I don't know, I'm, I'm happy with this. Uh, this card looks good. Looks good to me. Just Guy Wind Scout. Two and a blue for two on Flying Prowess. Uh, again, so this card existed in Bro as a 2-2 Flying Prowess, and it had types. Um, this card has one fewer point of toughness, which really doesn't matter that much on Flyers, to be to be perfectly honest with you. Like, yes, it matters, but uh, not not so much. I mean, it does, right? Like, against Red and stuff, like, there's the one removal spell that deals a bunch of different, you know, damage and stuff. But, uh, yeah... I don't know, I don't hate, I don't think this card's completely unplayable. Like, I think it can work in a prowess deck, right, if you're doing aggro-y stuff. Like, it can kind of do that, and it fills a role. It seems like it might be playable. But, uh, yeah. Karu Spell Snatcher. 3 and a blue for a 3-3 three, three with morph for 4 blue-blue. Um, when it's turned face up, you counter target spell. If that spell is countered this way, exile it instead of putting it into its owner's graveyard. You may cast that card for, without paying its mana cost for as long as it remains exiled. So honestly, like the morph side of this, like seems really good. like six mana. You counter their th it, it is so I have this in tier three, which is kind of like a give. Up, I give up on rating this card, like actually. So the four mana three three is bad. Like you never want to do that. You never want to cast this as a four mana three three. You're always gonna morph this on turn three, um, and then at some point later on in the game, like you can trade it off or whatever. And there's like weird stuff going on, but uh. Yeah, I mean, I don't hate it. Like, I don't. I, this this is really tough to evaluate. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be really like this. This is one that you really have to see like in play to be like, oh, it does the thing, or oh, it literally never gets there, right? Um, and in this format, it may never get there. 
Mistfire Weaver, three and a blue for a three one flying morph for two and a blue. When it's turn face up, target creature you control gains hexproof until end of turn. Yeah, I mean, I kind of like this thing. Um, play this for morph, and then at some point you're going to make a hexproof thing. You know, protect your guy. Maybe the two or two is a little too high, but it does. It is like, I mean, four mana three. But like it is a flyer at the end of the day, and like uh, maybe I'm like overrating how good the hexproof is. Um, because whatever, but you can get into these spots where like they target your thing and then you get to hexproof it. I don't know. The blow potential on it's pretty big. It also like has limited downside. You can flip it for maybe tier two is a little too high. Maybe I should put this in tier three, but I'm gonna leave it in two for now. Monastery flock two and a blue for an O5 defender flying with more for a single blue mana. It's cheap. That's a cheap morph. Um, but uh, it turns into an 05. So, yeah, not super interested in this. I mean, at least it seems kind of playable. Like, the nice thing about this card is you can play it as a 3 mana 2 2, which is terrible, right? That's very bad. But, you know, I mean, it's not. It's not that bad. Like, at least you're doing something, right? And then if you really need an 05 Flying Defender, you can be like, okay, I got an 05 Flying Defender. Can you... <laughs> can you... Can you in the... I think you could do this. In the middle of combat, you could morph this to be an attacking fly. You know, ignore that, but yeah, that's, that's kind of funny. This card... You know where this card needs to go? This card needs to go in uh, DMU. Oh, man. Flying Defender that you can, like attack with with the the, the uh, one mana guy yeah I love that Mystic of the Hidden Way 4 and a blue for a 3-2 it can't be blocked and it has morph for 2 and a blue so the first time I saw this I was like oh it's terrible it's freaking 5 mana 3-2 it's so bad but it, it can't be blocked I mean can't be blocked is kind of good and again in this format like this breaks board stalls and in this format like I think there's just a lot of those, like just, again, based on like a lot of the creatures I've seen, and white has a lot of these, and blue, and uh, I mean, I don't, you know, it seems kind of playable. It seems like a little bit more playable than some of the other cards. Again, it's like a five minute spell, but you can play it on three, and it's not like a complete nightmare. Uh, yeah, so I don't hate it. <laughs> Pearl Lake Ancient, five blue, blue for a six seven with flash. It can't be countered, it has prowess of all abilities. And you can return three lands you control to their owner's hand and return it to its owner's hand. So you can protect it from removal, but you have to, you know, you have to play out your lands again. But, uh, I mean, it's nice that it has that ability. It's just, like, does that actually do anything? I mean, it's large. It's about, it's like a pretty big uh, creature. It has flash. It can eat stuff. Yeah, I, mean, I don't know. It's like kind of like a whole breaker horror without any of the good text on it. <laughs> um... But, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's fine. It's just seven mana, so it's going into tier three. Quiet Contemplation. Two and a blue for an enchantment. When you cast a non-creature spell, you may pay one. If you do tap target, creature and opponent controls, and it doesn't untap during its controller's next untap step. Yeah, this is just too much. Like, you're paying three mana for an enchantment that doesn't do anything, and then, you know, you're doing even less. Like, I know your opponent's paying three mana to make a two-two, but at least they're making a two-two. You're making a zero nothing you're making a card that is probably annoying but you have to pay an extra one if if you didn't have to pay the one this card actually would be like maybe a little bit interesting but uh you have to pay the one so no river wheel aerialists five and a blue for a four or five flying prowess uh similar to the white like seven mana five four flying this thing is better than that card by like a lot i guess i should put this in tier three then yeah, let's just put it in tier three. But like the again, the, the issue with this is like, yeah, like I said here, like the six mana prowess, and you got all these oh man, so many spells in my hand at the point that I'm casting my six drop. I always have so many sp like <laughs> spells that I haven't cast at the, up to this point in the game when I'm casting my six drop. Um, so it's a six mana four five flyer, but a six mana four five flyer is probably just like decent hold. Yeah, it's probably just a tier three card. I don't know. I don't love it, but uh. It, it, it seems tier three. Tier three could be where this ends up. I don't know. We'll see. I don't love it. I don't like six drops. <laughs> Scaldkin. Uh, three and a blue for two, two flying. Uh, you can pay two and a red and sacrifice it and deals two damage to a creature or player. 
Um, I kind of don't hate it. Because the thing about it is, at least it does, have threatens to do something. Like, yes, your opponent's thrilled that you're sacrificing your four mana flyer to, like, kill their thing. But, on the other hand, you can do that, and it, like, can do, it does the thing. I should probably put, I should probably put this lower, even. It's probably still too much. Like, if this were three mana, I'd be like, mm, maybe... Not yet. I think this is still way too much, man. I think this is too much. This should be tier 5. But yeah. Uh, eh, eh. Whatever. <laughs> Scion of Glaciers. 2 blue blue for a 2-5. You can pay blue and it gets plus 1, minus 1 until end of turn. Um, so we've seen how decent this ability can be when it's like 1 mana. Now this is blue mana, so there is some limitations there. But you generally don't need more than like 2 activations and you need, need double blue to cast it. So... You know, and I, I, yeah, I mean, this type of effect tends to be decent. Like, you can make this into a 3-4, and that's really good. You can just attack, and it can block well, and it just kind of kind of does a decent amount of stuff. Like, for 4 mana, you know, you're, you're getting a thing. Like, again, they, they printed this in Brothers War, and it was it had an activation cost of 2 colorless. And that card was unplayably bad. But again, that was, you know, it's been, you know, 6-7 years, and... Creatures are worse, and this blocks and it attacks. So I'm gonna put it in tier two. I'm gonna just I'm gonna go out on a limb here and put it in tier two. Set a drift, five and a blue for a sorcery with delve, and you can put non-land permanent on top of its owner's library. Um, yeah, it's good. Delve does have diminishing returns. Um, delve. I mean, so again, we've seen this at four mana. It's a sorcery, so obviously it's gonna be like whatever. But you know, we've seen this at four mana, and at four mana. It's okay. It's a fine card, um, and this is probably going to be a fine card. And I don't think it's going to be much better than that, but it should be okay. It should be decent. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> um, and uh, that's how I feel about it. Singing Bell Strike. One and a blue for an enchantment. When it enters the battlefield, tap a enchanted creature. Enchanted creature doesn't untap during its controller's on tap step. An enchanted creature has you can pay six to untap this creature. So allowing your opponent to be able to untap their thing is really bad. But I don't think this is completely unplayable just because it is a decent tempo move. You can be like, alright, I'll play this on like turn four. Play two drop well, wait, two drops don't exist. So maybe I don't want to do that. Turn five and play a morph creature. It sounds a lot worse than the thing I just said, but you know we don't. The thing I just said isn't an option, so you know, it's it's maybe gonna be a bit tough. But uh, yeah, I, I don't know. It's like it kind of seems okay to me. Stubborn denial, single blue mana, instant counter target non creature spell unless its controller pays one, or you can counter it if you control a creature for a greater. But this is just way too narrow uh, to be good, so you're not gonna play it. Tygam Scheming, one in a blue for a sorcery. Look at the top five cards of your library. Put any number of them into your graveyard and the rest back on top of your library in any order. Uh, index. Any index uh, players? Any index enjoyers? Anybody like the card Index? Do I have my copy of Index? I'm going to show my freaking... Oh, do I have it? Do I have it? I want to find my Index. I want to find it. I used to think Index was good, by the way. I used to think Index was a good card. It's not a good card. Um, where is it? I'm going to find it. I'm going to find my index. Here it is. Index. Index, baby. Look at this. Uh -huh. <laughs> this is index. And it, uh, you know, when. That's a real card? Man, it changes. Wait, hold on. I'm putting this in, like, one of my cubes. This card's cracked. Mana chains? Look at this thing. Chaining creature gains cumulative upkeep one. Oh man. I mean it's not great, but uh, it's interesting. Uh, anyways. Back to tie game scheming. Yeah, this is cards unplayable, don't play it. Thousand wins. Four blue blue for a five six flying. It has morph for five blue blue. And when it's turned face up, return all other tapped creatures to their owner's hands. Which seems super strong, but again, seven mana. Seven mana, really but like again, six mana five six flyer. Like you can just like play that. It's like pretty good. It's not bad. 
Like it's not it's not bad. It's not it's not a, it's not bad, right? Like that's you can actually just like play this as its non morph side and it's like totally acceptable and it's like a big dude that like does a bunch of stuff. Again, I'm reluctant to put it in tier one just because it's so expensive, but yeah, it seems fine to me. Treasure Cruise, seven and a blue for a sorcery with delve, and you draw three cards. So this is uh it's a good card, but I don't think it's, you know super busted or anything. Again, Delve, diminishing returns. You gotta be aware of the diminishing returns on Delve. You can't just load it. You can't play three treasure cruises. Sorry. One one per deck limit <laughs> on treasure cruises. And again, like, the Delve cards are really good. If you have... I'm trying to think of, like, how many Delve cards do you want in your deck? Is it, like, what's the maximum? Is five too many? Right? Is five Delve cards too many? And I would say the answer is probably yes. So you, you probably want to be, like, one... One's great. Two or three. Three is probably like the sweet spot. Three, four, somewhere around there. Sweet spot in terms of number of delve cards. Because the delve cards are really strong. And you can cast them for cheap um, and whatnot. But again, like... They they are, are parasitic, right? They, they take their own resources. So it, there are concerns. But uh, I think Treasure Cruise is still fine. Still, still a fine card. Water Whirl... Four blue blue for an instant. Return up to two target creatures to their owner's hands. Um, yeah, so I've been thinking about this card. There's a card like Run Ashore from Kaldheim that does something similar. Run Ashore puts the, one of them on top of the library, um, which is a lot better than this card because it's, you know, you're not going down on cards to do the thing that you're doing. But I still think sort of like the, the theme is similar, right? Where it's like, hey, man, this is six mana, but you get two things off the board. You're getting to like attack them back. You have a lot of tempo, um, but again, I just have a really hard time giving six mana spells like high grades. Like I just really do because it's just they just are so hard to like. It's so hard for them to be good enough to warrant taking early in a draft. I think this is sort of an emblematic of that. Weave fate, three and a blue for an instant, and you draw two cards. So it's it's strictly worse. Uh, what did they just call it in? Uh, Wilds of Eldraine, they just printed this for one mana cheaper. And it wasn't very good in that format. And I don't think this is very good here, but I think it's more playable because of Morph. So, I wish it, I wish this were three mana. <laughs> I know that at the time they couldn't do this because, you know, Divination was like God's gift to like a Magic the Gathering card when cons came out. But like, um, yeah. <laughs> it's just, yeah. Wetland Sambar, it's a two mana two one. Yeah. Okay, moving on. And this is the final card in blue, Whirlwind Adept. Uh, four and a blue for a 4-2 Hexproof Prowess. So this card's really annoying. I put it in tier 5, like, because it's a 5 and a 4-2, right? It doesn't block at all. It doesn't block at all. Yes, attacking with it's nice, but it's like, okay, my opponent blocks with, like, their 3-2, and then you're just like, well, I can't guess like I have to use two spells that I maybe didn't want to use on this and then it's not so I don't know maybe this is like I had this originally higher I was just like it's so it's so like whatever if your plan is to play a bunch of like O5s in your deck to block like like if your opponent's playing a bunch of O5s this card's great otherwise I don't really see it to be perfectly honest with you but uh could surprise me could and, uh, yeah, that, that's all. So that's that's the blue cards. Hopefully there was, you know, something to gain out of this. Hopefully this was entertaining. Uh, if so, I'll see you next time. Goodbye for now.